Hi, I'm Tom, and I'm here to talk about strategies for directing 360-degree VR video. So, before we start, you need to put on a headset. I'll wait. Seriously, it is the whole point. See, in a headset, you're not just a viewer, you're a visitor, able to look all around the world. But there are some limitations. You can only turn your head. You can't interact or move. So as a director, it's my job to find a way to use the freedom, but not call attention to the limitations. Traditional movie directors have it easy. They can just force you to look at whatever they want. Close-ups, strange angles, quick zooms, and so on. But now, I want you to look over there. Did you do it? I have no way to know. And you're certainly not gonna like it if I just force you like this. One solution is to just fill the world with interesting stuff all around. But since I don't know where you're looking at any one time, everybody in the room has to just keep doing their thing. There's no progression, no build, no story. This is not directing. Well there, that's one way to do it. If everybody in the room looks at the main event, then you're likely to follow. The simplest way to direct in 360 is for me to lead your gaze. But how far around should I lead you? It's fine if you're standing or in a swivel chair, but look behind you. If you're sitting on a couch, it's annoying to have to turn all the way around. So even though I'm shooting in 360, Maybe I should direct mostly in, say, 180. It's like we both need to be mind readers. Let's see if you can figure out where I want you to look. If the camera is traveling, it's a good bet that you'll want to look forward. So those are some of my strategies for guiding your gaze without controlling it exactly. Also, it's important once I have your attention that I not lose it when I cut to a new location. Now you've been abandoned in a strange new place and you have to get oriented all over again and figure out where to look. So, this time, let's try it like this. I'll lead you around here. And now, when we cut, I'm still right here to greet you. Now, let's talk about embodiment. Who are you in this world right now? Well, it's not clear, but at least I'm talking to you like a person looking right at you. Because in VR video, you are not a fly on the wall, you are a person. So if nobody looks at you, it starts to feel like you are a ghost. And because you're not actually walking, the camera is pushing you against your will. Let's have someone as your guide to walk with you and give some context for why you're moving. And while in traditional video, it's common to have the camera backing away from actors, in a VR headset, this will feel threatening. It's strange to be a ghost, but look down. It's also strange to have a body that you can't control. How is a director supposed to handle this? One solution is to create a scene in which you are immobilized. Look down. Now it makes sense why you can look around, but you can't move. Of course, you also can't tell me what I want to know or escape, so really, you're just an observer. The actual scene is not between you and me. The actual scene is out here. Putting you in a wheelchair lets us have it both ways. You're immobilized and helpless, but still able to move along. You're a passenger, along for the ride. Assuming you're not paralyzed in every single video, let's see if we can find a sweet spot for how you can be embodied. Take a look down. Having a physical body might just call attention to the awkwardness. So let's get rid of that. Now you're hovering strangely over a chair. So let's get rid of that too and replace it with a shadow. Now there's nothing down there to distract you from where the scene is up here. And maybe this is the sweet spot as long as I don't do something like offer you a drink. Because of course, you can't drink it. Because this is not a video game, the visitor can't change the story, which means you can't be the hero. But 
you can be the sidekick. So look around, enjoy the ride.